both of these terms here. So let's take the two out. So this becomes the absolute value of two times X minus seven is less than epsilon. Oh, this is straightforward enough. There's the X minus seven now. So the, the absolute value of two times X minus seven is the same as the absolute value of two times the absolute value of X minus seven it must be less than epsilon. And now if we divide across by the absolute value of 2, we must end up with x, the absolute value of x minus 7 is less than epsilon over 2. So using the conclusion okay, as a starting point, okay, we can use the conclusion to try to find a value. There's a value here, okay? That's true from the conclusion. So here's a value here that x minus 7, this part of the premise, okay, uh, satisfies. So now we actually know that x minus 7, the absolute value of x minus 7 is less than epsilon over 2. So why don't we choose delta to be this epsilon over 2? So let's do that, okay? So let's choose, let's choose delta to be equal to epsilon over 2. So now we know, we've just found what our delta is going to be. So now let's find for each and every x that satisfies this condition, let's see, can we infer, okay, uh, from this premise, let's see, can we infer this particular conclusion? So now we know the delta, so let's actually evaluate this thing here. So now what we have is that uh, x minus 7, uh, and don't forget, we've chosen an epsilon to be greater than 0. So also epsilon is greater than zero divided by two is also going to be greater than zero. So now we know that this delta that we found is also greater than zero. That's important, yeah? Okay. So from this particular fact here, we have x minus seven has to be less than delta, but delta is, we've just chosen to be epsilon over two. Now let's expand out this absolute value on the inequality. So this becomes minus epsilon over two must be less than x minus seven, which is less than epsilon over two. That's exactly what this absolute inequality here is saying to us. Let's multiply across across all terms here by positive two. So this becomes minus epsilon is less than two times x minus seven, which is less than epsilon, right? Uh, let's multiply out the brackets here. So this gives us minus epsilon is less than two x minus 14 which is less than epsilon, voila, what have we got? We actually have reduced the premise, the x minus a, which is the x minus seven less than delta. We've actually reduced it now, okay, down to this fact here. What's this telling us? This is telling us that the absolute value of two x minus 14 is less than epsilon. So if we choose an epsilon, a delta to be epsilon over two, and we work off the premise with this particular condition, Okay. What we end up with is we end up with this conclusion, okay? which is exactly what we what we need, okay? which is what we've just shown here is this, is that this represents x minus a is less than delta. And we've, we've gone through what we've deduced from this is this fact here, which is that f of x, because f 2x is f of x minus l, is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we needed to do. We needed to go from here all the way down to arrive at this particular fact here. Okay, so guys, once again, uh, this was another another. Well, I suppose this actually from a from a playlist perspective, I suppose this was the first of first limit to evaluate in this particular playlist. But the key point here is this: is that we take the definition of our limit. Okay, we have our definition of our limit in general form. Okay. We substitute into that definition of the limit, the limit that we all the values within the limit, the function, uh, the limit, and where x is tending to, the a value. Okay, we substitute them in, into this definition, and then really what we need to do is we need to try to find a delta. Okay, that when we evaluate the premise, we end up with the conclusion. Now the real question always is, how the hell do we find this particular delta? Well, let's just inspect the conclusion because the conclusion okay, has has x's in it okay, and has our epsilon. Yeah? So what we need to do is we inspect the conclusion and by inspecting the conclusion, we arrive at a value. Okay? Our premise is less than this epsilon over two. So why don't we now choose that as our delta? So what we do is actually we use the conclusion and we work backwards to find the delta. Okay? Once we have the delta, then we we proceed to evaluate the implication by starting with the premise and showing that we can deduce from the premise the actual conclusion. Okay, guys, once again, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats. Uh, I hope that this video was intuitive, and more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.